Now I'm impressed with these Osbot line of cameras. In one of the previous videos, we looked at the 4K AI tracking webcams from Osbot. Today, we're gonna be looking at the Osbot tail air cameras along with the accessories that they provided over, which include the remote control and some network adapters. Now, before I jump into it, the important stuff that you need to know. Osbot did send me over this equipment for review and testing and all that good stuff to share with you. However, they paid me no money to produce this video or say anything specific about their devices. So they sent it over for review and I've been checking out these cameras for the last few weeks. Now, I was kind of conflicted on how to make this video for you guys because the problem that I'm having or still continue to have is that these are actually really good cameras and i didn't want to do the typical unboxing what's inside here's some features blah 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 so what i'm going to do is really talk about some of these potential use cases of how you can use these cameras because you know that we do focus a lot on live streaming on this channel we focus a lot on ptz cameras on this channel but most importantly, it comes down to use case. How could you use these cameras in your particular situation? Would they fit in your scenario? Would they not fit in your scenario? So that's what we're going to more so focus on this video. Because trying to create a video to showcase you guys all the different features and aspects of not only the camera, but the software for this as well and the application that goes along with it would take forever. Now, what I am going to do is have a live Q&A live stream as we talk about the Osbot equipment. So make sure that you do check the link in the description section because we're going to live stream this on Amazon and do a live Q&A and show you guys some demonstrations of setups and different things that you can actually do with these cameras. So let's kind of start high level. What can these cameras actually be used for? Well, they're PTZ cameras in essence. So if you want to set these up for a home studio, if you want to set these up for a podcast, if you want to use these in your church ministry, if you want to travel with these cameras, I even took these cameras outside, walked around the neighborhood and just saw what it could potentially do as a vlogging camera. I literally just held the camera in my hand, talked into the camera, walked around the neighborhood, used the built-in microphone that's already there. It has an AI gimbal on it, tracking camera gimbal. So having it track my face and keeping me in focus as I'm walking and moving around, so that's pretty cool. It's not the most vlog style type of camera, but if you wanted to use it for that aspect, you definitely could because it would allow you to do so. Battery life is great for this type of camera. Now, if it did have one of those uh, availabilities to plug in a dummy battery, that would be pretty cool, but it doesn't. So just make sure that you do fully charge it before you get started with the actual use of this camera it does give you the battery indicator on the front to let you know how charged it is but you can also download the app and i encourage you to download the app i think that's essential with using these cameras so that you can see the actual battery life of the camera the app will allow you to go in and see the actual visual output of the camera because obviously there's no screen here this is not like a vlog camera with a flip out screen so you can look at the camera and if you have the tracking turned on, you know that it's going to be on your face or the position that you set it to track. However, you won't ha be able to visually see what it's looking at unless you're looking at it through the app. So that's one thing to definitely consider is that use case. You, you're going to need to have a mobile device, whether that's Android or iOS, so that you can monitor the output feed of the camera. Now, very similar to the video that I talked about, the Osbot Tiny2 webcams, you do have the ability for hand gesture. So to be able to turn on auto tracking, turn it off, start recording and recording, those things are very unique to Osbot. And I highly encourage you to use those functionalities if you're not going to be heavy using the app because you can definitely use the hand gestures to do the main 
controlling of the camera, right? Those those are two of the highlights of the cameras. Really, hey, can I use hand gestures to get this thing to auto track me as a PTZ camera? Now, you also have the ability to put in a micro SD card, which is really nice so that you can record your content directly to your camera. So backups, great idea is to always have backups. So if you're gonna be using this with your video production, you can bring it into your video production software. I'm gonna talk about what I'm using here, Ecamm, and how I have these connected to the laptop wirelessly here in a second. Uh, but you can back up what you're doing by hitting the record button with your SD card slot right here. So that's a nice convenient feature for you as well. And again, I uh, mentioned that Osbot did send over accessories. So you have a remote control. So being able to control this through the app, being able to use hand gestures and being able to use a dedicated remote control gives you three different ways that you can control these cameras. And the remote control is really easy to use, rather unique. It does allow you to have three different cameras programmed so that you can control each camera individually, turn on the tracking, turn off the tracking, move it around left, right, up and down. So all the controls that you would have, or that you would want, I should say, you have in that controller. So really nice to have the flexibility to really use these in any way that you want. Now, as you can see here, I have these just sitting flat on my desk, but they also have a thread adapter on the bottom so that you can mount these on a tripod. So if you do want to travel with these in the included case, I would highly recommend keeping them in the case to protect the gimbal so they're not just moving around. You could easily take these on location, set these up on tripods and really have a streamlined small footprint to get that recording done for you. It also has built-in microphones, but if you're gonna be in certain scenarios that require better audio, the room's not treated, you do have a 3.5 millimeter connection that you can plug in a external microphone into these cameras. So again, multiple options, multiple ways to have redundancy with this system. Now, the part of this that really excites me is being able to use these cameras in a live streaming environment. What can you do when that is the scenario? And when you think about how you have all your connections to even do a live streaming event, a live streaming meeting, you need to physically connect your cameras to devices. Um, and, and I tested all of these different ways out. You can use USB-C from this camera and connect it to your computer directly and bring this camera in as a webcam. So that's great. You can use the micro HDMI out and connect it to a full size HDMI and run it into a video switcher like my ATEM Mini that's off to the side here and bring it in through your ATEM video switcher. So that's another way you can do this. So I could bring all three of these in physically over my video switcher system and switch between my eight and many between the different cameras. I could do that. You can connect these through NDI. Now NDI is what I more recently got all my cameras, my other PTZ cameras in here set up for on my network. And you can use the IP address, get these on your network. And now you can bring these over NDI into your video production software. Now you can do this over ethernet. Osbot does have an ethernet adapter that allows you to connect an ethernet cable into it. And then you can connect your ethernet cable into your networking switch. So that's really nice. And so you have that hardwired network connectivity and you can bring it in. And I've used Ecamm here, which I've recently talked about. I've switched over to Ecamm as my primary live streaming and video recording software of choice. Uh, it is Apple based. So if you have an Apple computer, definitely check the link in the description to check out Ecamm. And with Ecamm, it picked up the NDI, not only the physical connection NDI, but this computer right now is wireless NDI. So you can see in Ecamm, I'm actually moving the this uh, camera around. And this is the camera that I'm moving around right now. And it is wirelessly connected 
into Ecamm. So let me pause right here because this is kind of the, the, the reason I really am excited about this video. I have each of these cameras with the ability to have NDI and I can wirelessly bring all three of these cameras into Ecamm and have a wireless video live streaming setup. No cables. How cool is that setup? So if you're looking for something like that, that is portable, that you can just have on the go, or if you wanna have it there physically all the time, a wireless NDI connection is powerful. Now, another thing that you can do that I was like, oh, I'm on NDI, I have an NDI uh, PTZ controller. I actually put one of these cameras and programmed it into my PTZ Optics Super Joy controller and can control it over NDI wirelessly. So let me see here. I'm going to do this in real time as I'm recording this video because I forgot which group I put my camera in. So I'm going to see if I can go into my group here. So group two, camera one. All right. So I am wirelessly over NDI and I have this programmed into my SuperJoy. And as you can see, I am moving the controller on my SuperJoy and I am moving the gimbal of this Osbot Tail Air camera. Now that's pretty cool, all right? So go turn it all the way back around over here. So NDI is powerful when it comes to setting up your live streaming and video production, and it makes your workflow way easier. Now, obviously, if you want to, like I said, you have the ability to physically connect all of these devices up. But if you use the right software and the right hardware for your application, you can get away with not having to use certain equipment. And so for this environment in a traditional live stream setup, with three cameras, I can't connect three cameras physically into my laptop, but an alternative is a video switcher. But I can actually bypass having a video switcher because I can use NDI and bring all three of these cameras into Ecamm over the network. So I don't even need a video switcher because Ecamm basically has a video switcher built in and I can switch between the different cameras inside of Ecamm because it has that capability. So what I am excited to do, like I said earlier in the beginning of this video, is really show you guys through live demonstrations and answer those Q and A's in an upcoming dedicated live stream because these cameras have so much flexibility in the configuration setup process. Now, because these cameras are 4K, you're really getting that high quality of video, being able to zoom in and not lose quality of your overall uh, video signal. So that is another bonus with these particular cameras. So I'm excited for you guys to check out that video. And if you haven't already, hit like here, hit subscribe here. Check out the Tiny2 webcam video if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in this next video.